Well, welcome back. Yep, this is part two. Um, if you haven't had an opportunity to watch yet, please look at part one. Uh, you're going to pick up a few things there. Uh, but for those of you who are just refused to start from the beginning, uh, welcome anyway. Uh, you'll run into challenges later, and you'll either go back or call. Uh, one or the other will happen. Something's going to happen. Um, here's where we're at. We've got our box ready. I've cut out the bottom. I've added my gland uh, plug, uh, my hole for my fan that's already been pre-drilled, my vents, and I've got my cap all marked out. And I'm getting ready to do, go through some cutting, and then we're going to get right into assembly. So let's move over to the a Dremel corner again. Ready? At this point, it's going to look like ass. I mean, it really does. Uh, just all you got to do now is just push these out, and they should all just about pop out. And if they don't, don't worry about it. Just use your little razor and go around there. You'll, you'll cut the last portions off. And let me show you how to finish this up. Oh, yeah. You remember I showed you that flat razor earlier? I told you it would come in handy. This is a good place. Look at that. That's just the dried plastic that came off of that circular blade. And all you do is clean it right off. And the good part about it is, is it doesn't stick. And it's not, there's nothing left behind when it pops off. See? Nice box. Now what you're left with, you see how you got these little areas here that you got to square off? Remember, we're using a round hole, a round saw to cut a square hole. That's where your razor knife comes in handy. And then all you gotta do is square off your corners a little bit, should your corners need it. Now after you do several, several hundred of these, um, yes, it does get a little bit easier each time. Um, I'll make, sometimes I'll make, oh, I may make six or eight of them at a time. And so I'm, I'll sit out here and I'll just watch a movie and I'll just make eight lids and then eight bases and, you know, going about my business. Um, not often. <laughs> I'm not that predictable. There. Much better, see? Okay, now that I've got all that set, uh, I'll just start adding my pieces. Um, now, first of all, see, this is great. This is a great example. This is the way this is going to go in here. And you'll notice that that hole's a little bit too small. I'd rather have a hole too small because I can always take out a little bit. If the hole was too big, you can't put anything back. So the first thing I always put in is going to be my power switch. So let me cut myself a little bit. All, I, all you do is just shave off one end of it or the other. And you just keep doing that until it fits. And then that way you've got a perfect match for, yep, for your box. And that, my prediction is, will go right in there. Yep. Bingo. There, one on-off switch right there in the center. Now when it comes to the volt amp meter, the ones I like to use have, are, are marked on the outside, so that you'll know which way is up and which way is down. Um, and they do make these where there are no markings on the outside. You just know that there's a digital readout. Uh, and you always wonder, well, how do I know which way is up? Because you don't want to put it in there and then have to take it apart just to turn it all 180 degrees. Well, the way they make these is that on the back side, there's a, a schematic. And the schematic is drawn in the same orientation that the front should be. So if there are no, if there isn't an A, C, A, C, V, and A here on the front of yours, uh, if you just turn it over on the back and you read the schematic, if the schematic looks like this, you've got it upside down. Just, and then it should go in. 
it should read correctly. Now on the ends of these there are some small tabs that are not necessary in our um, application, so I just break them off. They're just small, you'll see there, they're just little tabs. You just break those off. They're retainers. That goes in our hole. Goes all the way down to the bottom. Now remember I told you about the super glue and the activator? Hold my beer and watch this. <laughs> all I need is to get this set straight, which I do. Put a dot of super glue there, a dot of super glue there. Grab my can of activator spray. That's a cinch. It ain't going nowhere. See, that's in there. So what I'll do now is let that set and dry on its itself. Oop, got a little bit that leaked out there. That's the activator spray. And so I'll remove the activator spray there. Next is, oh, before I get to that, what I want to do is I want to add the, uh, the, the receptacle. Now, the receptacle will be mounted last, but will be fitted first, in a way. This is a 250-volt, 20-amp receptacle. Okay? It, its purpose is to receive and transfer 250 volts uh, in a maximum of 20 amps. And you'll know that because it's got two screws on it and they're both brass. So they both are hot. 120 volts, 120 volts. It will explain that and then one ground. Now, since I don't need these retainer screws that come with it, I'll just remove those. You lay that plug into your slot and just line it up to where you want it, where you know it's straight. And what do we always say? Measure, measure, measure. I use a number eight, thir eight by 32 screw, it's a half inch. And I just measure the size of the screw. Match that to my drill bit and then lo and behold in the two places that I want to add a screw to hold that down I just drill a hole one two there bingo now I'm gonna leave that drill bit on there because that's the same I use the same screw for the base for the heat sink so when I mount that I'll just I'll have I don't have to measure again all right so that will go in there. And I'll use the, this time I'm going to use the Inkbird. And the Inkbird PID controller is a really wonderful piece of equipment. I mean, it's just the MyPen TA4 or T series and the Inkbird are equivalent. They are equal there, products. I use them both. Um, they're just, there's just two different ways to program them. That's all there is to it. I mean, although they're still the same doggone thing. Uh, that goes right here. See, that should, it does. It slides right through my open hole. Let me remove that. <laughs> Place a keeper on the back. And yes, this only goes on one way. Yep, and once you get it all the way down there, just take a small Phillips screwdriver and screw down the retaining screws here. You'll see you've got one here and you've got one here. I screw down the retaining screws. And that holds it in place and secures it. Now, the one more, the one extra step that I take, uh, and that's because it happens. You know, people will drop this and it's happened before, they'll drop it and this retainer will pop off for some reason. Uh, to prevent that, I'll put a drop of super glue on each side of it just to hold it firmly in case you drop it, it doesn't go anywhere. 
it, you know, it kind of, it, it, it removes a whole lot of potential, oh shit, you know, for later on. Okay. And you see how it's coming together? Oops. Let me screw that up. See, so far so good. Uh, and that's just the beginning of uh, what our controller is going to look like. Now let's turn our attention to the base. Uh, the base, we got to do a little bit of work on the base. Now since my fan's going on this side, it makes it relatively easy to just place my heat sink in here just about anywhere I want it on the bottom side. And I'm going to place it down there where the wires come in for the shortest, the shortest method possible so I can hook it, I can connect one of them directly to the solid state relay. And remember, we left that drill bit on here. So, those are my pilot holes for marking. Then, got one of these, and this bit, what this does is it flares out that hole so that that screw head lays flush with the bottom of the box. So you'll see how we flushed them out, or and that way it lays flush. First thing I do. <coughs> yep, we're getting close to being finished assembled, and then the next thing we'll do is, uh, I guess the last video we go to will be the wiring. Uh, we'll explain that, and then we'll demonstrate it. It really is not that difficult, and then of course after that, the very last video will be uh, programming. And I say programming, we're just, uh, it's actually setting the parameters. Um, and once you understand the parameters, it really is a uh, lickety-split process. Uh, doesn't take a degree in anything uh, in order to accomplish that. Uh, if it did, we'd be in trouble. Be nice to have. There we go. Now, uh, just a little bit of very useful thermal grease. And man, you don't need a whole lot of this. All you need is just a little bit. Now you can put this on the solid state relay or you can put it on the heat sink. Doesn't matter. You see, got grease on there. Marry those two up, kind of give them a smoosh. Yeah, smoosh them together a little bit. And then screw it down. All I got to do is find them screw where they are. Bam, we got it. Now it's time to add our fan. Before I add the fan, I'll go back to the Dremel and I got a small um, circuit or sand disc. I'll sand this hole just to make it look pretty. It's time to attach the fan. Now when you're doing this, make sure that you attach the fan in the same direction that you want it to blow or in the proper direction. Uh, it always blows where you have the sticker. That's, it'll blow in that direction. So it'll blow in your face if you're looking at the sticker. So in this case, we want that sticker to be pointed inside. And I don't care where you put the wire. 
you can put it on the top left, uh, top right. It, it, I'd put mine at the top just, you know, because I know from experience it's kind of easier to get to that way. Not impossible to get to any other way, but just easier to get to that way. And of course, I'm a stickler for once you find something that works, you know, if it's a process, you need to try to repeat that process as often as you can unless you find a better way. Now these are actually the small screws I'm using here are M4's uh, uh, 70 pitch. And that may not mean anything to anybody, just, just get the screw that fits the hole you got. And you know that these don't need to be extremely tight, they just got to be secure. And um, I use those self-locking nuts, so I don't have to use lock washers. And uh, they tend to really do a good job, and they stay on there forever and ever and ever until you try to take them off. And that's what they're designed for, to be self-locking. So... pair of needle nose and then just and you'll know when you get it cinched up there you go you'll feel it you'll feel the resistance and it's just trying to screw that nut on the end there that's where it's going into its self-locking uh, portion at the end of that nut and good okay we're finished see there's the whoa there there's the fan there's my heat sink with my solid state relay, my input for my cable, and this, and again, the last thing that's attached is going to be this. Um, this will go right here on top, and that will be your proportional integral derivative controller made by you. Next step. Um, looks like we're at the point now to where I just need to clean things up here. I've got a little bit of soldering to do. I can show you that. Uh, but then we've got our electrical portions. So I'll get that stuff ready and stay tuned for part three. Yeah, we're going to do part three now. Happy distilling.